morning. Jelaine here with the Jonestead Farm. We are currently on our way to Boring, Oregon to go pick up some breeder pigs. We have a boar named Hamlet and a young gilt that is about five months old and we're trying to figure out names for her. We were in such a hurry to get everything set up for them yesterday, we forgot to check the weather forecast again and <laughs> trip check to make sure roads were okay. I'm gonna turn the phone around so you can see what we're driving on. It's snowing and 34. The last time I checked a few days ago, it said that it was supposed to be a low of 35 or 36 overnight at government camp. Clearly, the forecast has changed. We're towing a trailer back there, and luckily it's not full of precious cargo yet, but it will be soon. How's it going over there, driver? Good. Slow and safe. Slow is cool. It is. It's pretty. trying to coax Hamlet, our new boar, to go under where the hot wire had been. Pigs are so smart, he thinks it's still hot and so he doesn't want to cross the line. He hasn't been fed yet today, so hopefully he follows the bucket of feed well. Hamlet's the black one and Clementine is the sow he is in with. She's two and he is like 15 months or 16 months. Coaxing pigs out is tricky, even when they are starving because they haven't had breakfast yet. He knows that's supposed to be a hot wire and he does not want to cross it. The electric fence is held off, but Brian's holding on to it. There we go. Come on, Hamlet. <laughs> All right, good boy. What do you think, Colby? There's a lot of animals here, huh? They have 18 pigs, a couple turkeys, and a lot of chicken. And right here is a gorgeous Airbnb behind us. At this point, we're starting to try everything we can to get this boar into the back of the trailer. Typically, we could back right down to the gate and kind of uh, coax the pig right into the trailer uh, but due to the recent flooding and snow that was in the Portland metro area that wasn't going to be an option as you can see in this picture it's very muddy and the car would have got stuck and torn up the guy's lawn so we tried and tried and tried what could have been a five minute task turned into be an hour and a half ordeal to uh, to get him into the trailer Slow and steady wins the race. The idea we're going for here is to have a steady ramp for the pig to go up. Uh, we have grain in the bucket and there's also vegetable scraps on the ramp as well. The idea with the plywood there is that if he doesn't see anything except for that, he can't get distracted and run off. He did make a run for the gate at one point, uh, and the farmer here had to run up and close the gate. You know, he kind of has a mind of his own, and he kept going back to see his friend Clementine. Take nine or ten. I've lost track. Don't get smushed, Brian. Oh, 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 oh. So close. Don't be alarmed with him slipping on the ramp. He's all muscle. We wanted to be as real with this video as possible and don't want to edit little mishaps like that, but he is okay. What do you think of it? What do you think? An interesting thing we learned out here at the Wilson Farm is that just because you are have the space for a lot of animals and a big garden and turkeys and chickens doesn't mean that's the most profitable thing that your land can offer. 
Jolene mentioned earlier in this video that they have an Airbnb. They used building materials from an existing barn and a foundation. Uh, they dismantled the barn and constructed a very nice Airbnb that um, is sold out through the end of November. So just because the farm has been set up for two generations as a animal farm doesn't mean you can't change things up. Um, there's actually a strong following these days of homesteads and a lot of people want to support them and they like where the, to know where their food came from. And if they can go out and spend a night or two on an active farm, feed away from chickens and right off the garden is your deck for your Airbnb, well, people want to see that and they're willing to support it. And it is also supporting local and sustainable agriculture. There's a big squeal and they had to board him off with those two by sixes. They threw the pan in and now he's happy as a clam right. eating. But he was not happy for a minute getting in there. He was trying to bust out. Now Brian's wiring in the divider. Hope it holds. And we got to put the guilt in. We did it. Let's get that back on. She'll kick out of that. Or flash. They have a glow pitch. Yeah, we got a little bit of work to do. At least let her calm down for a second. Nice job. Oh my gosh. Okay, Alex. Got him in. Totally <laughs> Too much excitement for the baby. Stopping by my childhood feed store. It's for sale and I want to go see if the owners are here so I can tell them congratulations for retiring. See you later. As we travel and spend our money these days, we always try to support small business. This is one of them. This is Les Garen's shop. They, um, it's a farm store in Sandy, Oregon. Uh, it's currently for sale and we hope that a small owner buys it. Um, also in Sandy, we could have went to any restaurant we wanted, but we went to a restaurant called Thai Home. And that is a small, independent, one location restaurant. Um, very good food, good service, and we've had good luck there. And we'd rather spend $25 there instead of giving it to huge corporations that, you know, are all about profit and not about people. Colby's doing really good. Sitting at the auto body parking lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she drove us here though. We stopped for Thai food at Thai Home. Mm. It's our favorite place. Uh, these are drunken noodles, and I ate one, so now I'm drunk. So Colby's driving. Woo! <laughs> Careful. Gotcha. Maybe she's the one eating the drunken noodles. <laughs> mm -hmm. The drive between Sandy and Bend isn't too bad, but if you throw in snow, a young child. It can take a little bit longer. Home sweet home. Just getting set up, getting ready to unload. Brian just removed the dividing panel. We'll see how excited he is to get out of there. He might slip on this ramp. Good luck, dude. Come on down. You want some feed to jiggle? Jump He's not so sure. Dixie back. He's sliding a little bit. He's working on it, Mom. Here he goes. He's real leery. It's flexing under his weight, but it's holding him. Welcome home. Hey, there's food. We got food for you. Hamlet. Big, 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 big. All right, let's get that fence on. <laughs> yeah, let's get that fence on. He's the big boy. All right. It's dinner time here at the Jonestead Farm. How come the how come the pigs get to eat before the farmers? Because <laughs> the farmers weren't ready for the pigs. But it was now or several weeks out, and we've already been delayed because of weather once. 
This little girl back here is a little more nervous. We've got her feed pan set up right next to her shelter for the night. And she's just trying to say hello to her friend. None of them have been zapped yet by the fence. Let's see when she touches it. I still think they sound like bullfrogs. Pigs are silly.